Good morning, Pleasant Hill Church of God. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Jay. Morning. I don't know who got to get out to that strawberry festival yesterday. It was quite a madhouse. I think our booth is, did very, very well, I think, right? But, we need one bag of ice. The record has been 79. Wow, so we broke the record. That's great to hear, yeah. The line was continuous from, I believe, 9.30 until 7 p.m., there was always a line, so, and that line sometimes was pretty long. It was great. Speaking of that, though, I wanted to, I wanted to share a story of that I was, I was in line for the donuts, and don't, don't judge me. <laughs> donuts are bad, I know. They're, they're my kryptonite, though. So I was in line for the donuts, and there was this woman behind me with her child, and she kept stopping him from doing everything. He could not do nothing. It was like, don't, don't get in the grass. Your allergies are bad. Don't touch that. It's dirty. Don't, don't skip on that. That's thing. Don't touch, don't pick up that rock. It was like, she kept stopping him from doing everything he wanted to do. I felt so bad for the kid. I was like, I don't know what kind of, I know parents want to be protective over kids, but sometimes you think it might go a little bit too far, right? And I know our Lord is protective over us. And if you think about it, guys out there, if, if somebody's telling you, hey, don't sing the song, don't, don't, don't sing that song. Don't get happy today. Don't, don't praise the Lord. Don't, don't listen to it. Come on. So let us stand and let's praise the Lord. We're going we're gonna to get it going with world outside your window.
Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your voice to the sky. Praise the God of all creation. Let his name be lifted high. us clean hands. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees, oh Spirit. Good morning. It's good to see you all here in God's house today on this just beautiful uh, June uh, Sunday. And, um, uh, and just uh, that we have a, uh, have a youth group out at the Strawberry Fest Festival uh, uh, with their booth out there. So if you get the chance to go out to Strawberry Festival, make sure you visit their booth. I guess they had a great day yesterday as far as uh, making sales. And of course, that uh, that fundraising for the youth that goes towards their camps and all that. So it's just a real blessing uh, for our youth group uh, the last couple of days. And also uh, at this time, I'd like to read to you from the book of Galatians. This is uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 6. It says, the one who was taught, or excuse me, uh, I, I guess I wrote down the, oh, I, I did write down the right one. Okay, here we go. Galatians 6, verse 6. It says, do not be deceived. Uh, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, he will also reap. 
For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows from the Spirit will also reap from the Spirit eternal life. Let us not do heart, lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Um, at this time, uh, if our deacons will come forward, we'll receive our morning offering. Shall we pray together? Father in heaven, we thank you so much this day for your blessings uh, that you just pour down upon us every day, Lord. And uh, Father, we are very thankful. And we just return to you now uh, some of those blessings back to you uh, in the form of tithes and offerings. I pray you bless the giver this day. Also, Lord, we just ask that you would be with us as we spend this time with you, worshiping you, lifting up your name and praise. And Father, we pray, Lord, that you would encourage us, that you would uh, teach us from your word. And we just ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Next we're going to sing is Here I Am to Worship. Will you stand and sing with us? Here we are to worship. So I did want to say something. Yes. We will be having Maddie Hildebrand leave our group yes. here, and she will be returning as Maddie Westfall <laughs> next time you see her. <laughs> something else that's super fun to watch from this angle is the energy of the kids and the exhaustion of the parents. I know y'all can't see that from your angle, but we're enjoying it. <laughs>
Lord, thank you for this day. and Thank you for everything that you bless upon us, give us. Lord, may we take recognition of it. Father God, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of all our wrongdoings and evil ways. Father God, bring us back to you twofold, fourfold, tenfold. Father God, may you be dwelling in our hearts and our souls and our minds and our physical being all the time. Lord, I pray we, we pay attention and we listen and we accept this message that you've prepared through Scott. And may it bless us. May we see you in it. As we pray this all in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much to our worship team and just that, that time of just uh, communing with the Lord through praises and uh, just through music. Just appreciate you leading us in that. And at this time, uh, we'll uh, dismiss our junior church, let them head on out. And if you'd like to, turn in your Bibles to the book of Luke and Luke chapter 8 and verse 4. Luke chapter 8 and verse 4. Well, you know, it's that time of the year again when we, many of us get back into our gardens and we get our feet into the, the good soil once again. You know, uh, with rising inflation and fear of food shortages, I understand that a lot of people, many people have, have not had gardens previously, or maybe not grown anything previously, or maybe had given up on gardening a while back, or back out planting things again this year. And you know, uh, Teresa and I, over the years, as we've gotten older, we've kind of sh kind of shrunk our garden, but this year we kind of expanded it a little bit, um, just you know, just to, just to have some good food uh, at less prices, you know, but. But, you know, for any gardener or farmer, soil is an important factor in getting a good crop. You've got to have good soil. The seeds that you plant need a good, a good and inviting place to grow. You know, when I first plowed up the patch of ground that's become my garden, I was a bit disappointed in the soil that I found. It was a heavy clay soil with lots and lots of rocks in it. Not giant rocks, but just a bunch of rocks about so big, and uh, just just hard to do anything with that. And it wasn't the best best place to grow things. However, I've, over the years, I've pulled out a lot of rocks out of that uh, that garden. I've also worked in lots of manure and compost and wood ashes and all kinds of organic matter over the years, and. That garden now, I have to say, has a, a nice, rich, and easily worked soil that plants love. You know, one thing about it, people don't realize that soil, sometimes even the worst soil, can be changed. It can be worked with. It can become useful. It can bear a wonderful harvest with the right care. Luke chapter 8 and verse 4 tells us a little story about soil, if you listen with me here. It says, when a large crowd was coming together and those from various cities were journeying to him, he spoke by way of a parable. The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell beside the road, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky soil, and as soon as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it out. Other seed fell into the good soil, and it grew up and produced a crop a hundred times as great. And he said, as he said these things, he would call out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. 
his disciples began questioning him as to what this parable meant. And he said, to you it's been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it's in parables, so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those beside the road or those who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so that they will not believe and be saved. Those on rocky soil are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. But these have no firm root. They believe for a while and a time of temptation fall away. The seed which fell among the thorns, these are the ones who have heard. And as they go on their way, they are choked with the worries and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to maturity. But the seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and hold, fa hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance." Let's pray before we continue. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for this day that you've blessed us with and this word that you've blessed us with. And we pray now as we look into your word, as we consider it, as we contemplate it, that uh, it would be like a seed that gets into our hearts that, that, that sprouts and grows and, and brings fruit to maturity. And Father, I just pray now that you would cleanse me uh, make me a worthy vessel to proclaim your word this day. I ask these things in the name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. You know, in today's Bible verses, we find that large crowds were converging upon Jesus from many different towns and cities. And Jesus, as they came to him, spoke to them in a parable. Now, Jesus often put his teaching in the form of a parable. Uh, a parable simply is, is just a simple story that conveys an important moral or spiritual lesson in its telling. The parable of the what's called the parable of the sower, or sometimes people call it the parable of the so soils, it, it's found there in just a few verses, uh, uh, chapter 8, verses Five through eight, just a few verses there. And if you look at that parable, can kind of stand alone by itself apart from its interpretation. And it's a really a very simple, short story. And the elements of the story would have been familiar to Jesus' audiences. Uh, they were familiar uh, because they were all familiar with the agricultural practices of that time. And, you know, and we are too in some sense. I haven't really changed that much, but you know how it goes. The, after the soil had been worked, the seed would have been broadcast by hand or sowed by hand across the field, and it would probably have been wheat or, or barley is usually what was grown. And planting would have been done at the beginning of the rainy season so that the seed would be able to germinate and to grow. And the seed that, uh, you know, as it, they would as they would sow the seed, some of the seed would fall at the what might call the margins of the field and might be lost. Um, the birds might come and take some of it away that was laying out in the open. Rocks were also a problem in the land of Israel, and seed would not grow well on the rocky outcroppings, of course, or in the thin soil that maybe just barely covered a, a, maybe a rock shelf there. And even if the seed, uh, so even if the seed germinated and grew, sometimes there would be weeds and thorns in the soil that might grow up too and, and choke out the developing stalks. But it was clearly understood even then that good soil would produce a good harvest, a good crop. Because a single kernel of seed, of grain, could re reproduce itself many times over. And you would harvest, the idea is, when you're farming like this, the idea is that you harvest more than what you plant. And so you end up with more than what you planted. And so 
there's a lot in this little story that Jesus tells, it's really not all that surprising. It simply describes the process of growing things. It illustrates the challenges that each farmer faced in growing a crop. However, there are some things in the parable for at the time which would have, they would have stuck out as being out of the ordinary. First of all, the one who's sowing the seed is kind of reckless with the seed. He just kind of throws it everywhere. And sometimes in places where it can't possibly grow, like on the path or on the rocks or among the thorns. He generously sows the seed everywhere. So that kind of would have stuck out. Also, you know, the seed is expensive and it's precious. Even today, seed is very expensive. You don't want to waste seed like that, but yet you have the sower just throwing it everywhere. The other thing that's surprising in the parable is the yield. It's told that, that we're told that the crop yields a hundred times what is planted, or a hundredfold. So each seed basically produces one hundred more seeds. So the sower apparently can afford to be wasteful with the seed because the yield is going to be so great. It's estimated that at that time the average yield for a crop that was planted was not a hundredfold, but seven to tenfold. You could expect seven to ten times what you planted. So a hundredfold yield was a lot. It would have been a true bumper crop bordering on the miraculous. So we have this simple story here, a parable, about something very familiar with a few surprises thrown in. This is the parable. And on the surface, there's no hidden message or lesson. It's kind of mysterious. And Jesus concluded the parable in verse 8, chapter 8, verse 8. He says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So Jesus hinted that there might be something more to this parable than we might first realize. In Jesus' words, he who has ears to hear, let him hear, is really a challenge to the listener and a bit of a teaser. If you really want to know what it means, Jesus says, you're going to find out. You're going to search and you're going to find out. If you don't really want to know, you'll soon forget about it all and go on your way. So the question is, do you really want to know? And maybe what we're going to know is something about ourselves. But, you know, at this point in the, the story, we might see ourselves in the disciples because in Luke chapter 8, verse 9, it reads this. It says, His disciples began questioning Him as to what this parable meant. Because they didn't get it either. You know, what do you mean by this, Jesus? What's this parable mean? What are you trying to say? Well, the disciples apparently had been, those, been one of those who have ears to hear. It got them thinking. They wanted to know what the parable meant. And they knocked on the door... And the door was open to them. Jesus said to them in Luke chapter 8, verse 10, he says this, he says, to you, you, you've come to me, you're knocking on the door, you want to know what this is about, you have ears to hear, you want to know. So he says this, to you, it's been granted then to know the mysteries. You notice that there? Granted to you to know the mysteries, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But he says, to the rest, to those who just didn't care what they heard and went on their way, he says, but the rest, he says, it's in parables, so that in seeing, they're not going to see. And in hearing it, they won't understand. So the first step to finding any answer is curiosity. It's curiosity. Maybe if nothing else, that's what we might lack, is curiosity. To find an answer like this, you have to have a desire for the things of God. You have to have a, a hunger 
and a thirst, an appetite for the Word of God. You have to have an ear that's tuned to God's voice. You have to care about these things. So the disciples ask, and Jesus gives to them the answer. He says, I'll give you the answer, but you know it's going to remain a mystery to others because they're not searching for it. The parable contains a mystery, he says, about the kingdom of God. Remember that Jesus had been preaching and teaching about the kingdom of God. Back in Luke chapter 8, verse 1, last week we looked at that passage where Jesus went about proclaiming the kingdom of God. Also, Luke 4, 43, Jesus says, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, for this is a reason I was sent. So he went out proclaiming this message. And that phrase, the kingdom of God, nicely summarizes the purpose of God in this world and the plan that God has for this world. The kingdom of God describes the coming salvation to human beings and even to creation itself. The kingdom of God is the hope that God gives us in Christ Jesus. It's eternal life itself. However, there are those who seek after the kingdom of God, and there are also those who are not even remotely interested. That's the truth of it. So Jesus says in Luke chapter 8, verse 10, he says, to the rest, I'll give you the mysteries about the kingdom of God, but to the rest, they're going to get it in parables, so that seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand. You know, the Word of God is often hiding in plain sight. The will of God is often hiding in plain sight. You know, think about this. There is important questions that we might have. You know, what, what's my purpose? Why am I here? What does the future hold? You know, do you want to know your Creator? Do you want to know how to find salvation? Do you really want to know the difference between right and wrong? Those answers can easily be found in the Scriptures, in the Bible, and even, I think, in nature itself. But we often ignore those things because God's Word, God's will, often is hiding in plain sight and it need, need not be a mystery to any of us. But it can only be perceived by those who are looking for it. For those who just don't care, or maybe are openly hostile to the Word of God, they'll never see it, or understand it, or be able to hear it. And that's why Jesus said to them, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. So it was an invitation. It was a challenge to the hearers. And the disciples came and, you know, what are you talking about? Tell us. Have you ever uh, done any of those crossword puzzles? I know some people are big fans, some, some aren't. But, you know, I, I've, I've done a few over the years. And you, know, you get stumped on a crossword puzzle and you get, just can't, you can't figure out what that word is that needs to fit in there. And what do you do? You look down at what well, sometimes it's on the bottom of the page or the, a page in the back and you go and you find that word, you know, and you get the answer. Well, you know, uh, it's interesting. I think in this particular passage, the disciples are kind of stumped, but they're interested. They're curious. And that's why they come to Jesus and they seek an answer. And so Jesus gives to them an answer or an interpretation. And then starting at verse 11, he said to them, the seed, let's start there, the seed, it's the sower sows, is the word of God. It's the word of God. And in the context, when it says the word of God here, I believe he's emphasizing or it's equivalent to the message that he, Jesus himself had been proclaiming you've been proclaiming the kingdom of God, the proclamation of God's coming salvation. And Jesus then is the sower. 
who generously, you know, like told before, he, he's, he's reckless with the word. He just throws it out there in all sorts of places. He sows the word everywhere, even in places that don't be, seem to be receptive to it. You can think about it in their story so far, and it tells about Jesus in the gospel so far about how he went and he reached out to the tax gatherers and the sinners. People thought that those people were they're written off. They, they would never be receptive to the word of God, but they were. But then he found many who were like the Pharisees, whose hearts were hard that couldn't receive the word. So he throws the, word, throws the seed out there everywhere, kind of recklessly, in places where don't, they don't seem to be receptive. And the seed then is the word of God, and the soil then is the hearts of men and women. The seed is the word of God, the soil is the hearts of men and women. And so how do our hearts respond to the word? You know, those sown by the road are those folks that they hear the word, meaning that they hear the sounds of the word being spoken. However, the gospel makes no impression on them. It's thrown the seed thrown by the path. They don't think about it. They don't give it a second thought. They don't even struggle with it within themselves. The seed just doesn't penetrate. For these folks, their lack of response is actually a great personal disaster of which they're unaware of at that moment. Because Jesus adds in Luke 8, verse 12, because it doesn't penetrate, they don't allow it to penetrate. It says the devil comes and takes away that word and from their heart. And look what it says here. There's, there's a, this is the consequence or the, the outcome of that. It says, so that they will not believe. They take, the word's taken away, so they will not believe and be saved. Notice that there. They will not believe and not be saved. Then there's those who are on the rocky soil. These are the ones who hear the word, and immediately they receive the message with joy. They get all excited about it. However, like the seed that germinates in the rocky soil, there's no depth of roots. Moisture is lacking. And in the heat of the day, they begin to wither away. When faced with the troubles and the temptations of life that maybe come up because of the word, because of the choices they have to make, they quickly give up. They fall away, Jesus says. They fall away. And also those are those who fall among the thorns. And that's the seed that germinates and it begins to grow. However, thorns and weeds soon grow up and they, com they compete with the good crop. And eventually the good seed, the thorns prosper, but the good seed is choked out. And Jesus says that the thorns are the worries of life. Also riches of life and the pleasures of life. And these begin to compete with the seed of the word and they finally choke it out. You know, I think it's interesting you know, what's what's what said, two objects can't occupy the same place, space at the same time. You know, and it basically there's a competition going on there. It, it's the hope that Christ has given to us and the pleasures of this world. And, you know, one can't exist where the other is at. And, and eventually those, those things get choked out. You know, when I, I plant, I don't know, you probably had this, this same experience in the spring, I'll, I'll work up my garden. There's not a weed in sight. Not a weed in sight. And all of a sudden, I'll, I'll plant my, 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 my green beans or whatever. And they, when they first come up, they look real good. And then all of a sudden, these little tiny plants start popping up all around them. Okay? They came out of nowhere, it seems like. But they're, they've always been there. The seed was always there. And they start to grow up. And if I don't, if I don't, get in there and get rid of those little tiny weeds when they start, they become what? Great big weeds. And if you let that go on too long, you'll have nothing 
left in your garden but weeds. There's that competition there. And you've got to get, get at them when they're small, because when they get too big, they'll just take everything over. You know, the bigger you let those weeds become, the harder it will be to remove them. Because what it comes down to is we must always make that choice between the things of this world and the things of God. There's that choice, because one will overwhelm the other. And which one will prevail is the question. The last soil that Jesus talks about is the good soil that produces a bumper crop. And so Jesus, you know, sent out his disciples to make even more disciples. You know, that there's a reproduction that takes place, that there's more and more disciples made. And the word that Jesus gives to us is meant to be shared generously with others. And Jesus sows generously, and he expects a bumper crop. I want you to take notice of Jesus' words in Luke 8, verse 15. And what is the good soil? Yeah, that's the question we're asking. What's that good soil? What's it like? And he says in Luke 8, 15, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and hold it fast. They don't let go of it. And they bear fruit. And then it adds with perseverance. They bear fruit with a perseverance. They, they stick with it. They don't give up. So what is the good soil? What is the bountiful harvest? It's that honest and good heart. It's to hold the word fast and not give up. It's to bear fruit in our lives. It's to persevere even when things get tough. That is the good soil. So we have today this parable. On the surface, it's about the interaction between the soil and the seed. We also have then an interpretation about the interaction between the Word of God and the hearts of men and women. So we have the soil and the seed, and then the Word of God and our own hearts. The parable and the interpretation were meant by Jesus to prompt a response on your part. So if you have ears to hear and you're trying to hear and you have curiosity about such things, you have an appetite for the Word of God, He tells us these things to prompt a response. Because I'll just tell you this, this when I read this parable, when I've read this parable in the past and even when I was studying for this sermon, when I read this parable, my immediate thought was this, and maybe your immediate thought is, gosh, I hope I'm the good soil right? Because you want to be the good soil. You want to be the good soil. And so Jesus is encouraging you to be the good soil. You know, this is not a story about that certain people are fated to be one thing. What I mean by that is none of us, I think, are fated to be the one that's lost to the birds, or the one to be found on rocky soil, or the one to be choked out by the thorns. Because as I made the point earlier, earlier, soil can be changed. It can be amended. It can be altered. And it is though Jesus is holding up a mirror to you so you can see yourself clearly. And the question is, what kind of soil are you? You know, so that the devil doesn't steal away your salvation, you must develop a hunger for the things of God. You must develop an appetite for the things of God. Maybe you need to break up those rocks, that hard heart, and put your roots down deeper into God's Word. 
You might need to go through your life and pull up some weeds and cut down some thorns to make room for the Word of God to prosper. You must be the good soil. And as Jesus challenges us, He says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So that's a challenge to us. And also a bit of a tease, isn't it? That we would have those, that ears to hear what Jesus is saying to us in these words. So be the good soil. Be the good soil. This time, uh, let's ask our worship team to come on back up. Lead us in a closing song. with us. We're going to sing House of Miracles. Come on. 
Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day that you've blessed us with, for this time when we could spend in your house. And Father, as we go away from this place, I pray that your blessing would go with us. And Father, I pray for those who are joining us online as well, and I pray that your blessing be upon them this day. And Father, uh, we just pray that you would give us that uh, sense of curiosity and uh, an appetite for your word that we would know your will, that we would know your ways, that we would have eyes that see and ears that hear. And I just uh, just pray your blessing on each person here. And I ask these things in the name of our Savior Jesus. Amen. If you'd like to be 